Sandeep sir, all good morning. Uh, there is a lot of excitement in IT. I'm just wondering what is the excitement all about? I'm also wondering the same. So we are wondering the same thing. Actually. So do you think this short covering bout is not going to last? I mean, <coughs> the positioning was so weak that there is more short covering and rather than a long call here. So Nikunj, IT is one sector where people actually never became negative. So I interact with so many investors. Everyone is just looking to buy IT stocks on every correction, every level. So it's not that there was extreme pessimism ever around IT stocks. So uh, that's the reason why we actually saw the many of the mid-cap IT stocks actually do very well, despite the fact that the large-cap uh, IT companies did not perform. Now, uh, what's the story? The story is that growth might go from maybe 4 5% to 5 6% next year now for this kind of growth what's the kind of valuation you are willing to give to these companies that people need to uh, decide now there is an element of margin improvement which is possible next year as attrition remains under control and as wage hikes uh, also remain moderate so i think that could that's the only thing which could actually drives these IT stocks a bit more higher. Now, there could be different stories. Like, for example, if Wipro's a turnaround story and its valuations are now 30% below most of the larger IT companies, then there could be some uh, mean diversion happening there. And to that extent, that stock could perform. But for the other companies, I didn't see anything to get excited about what most of the other people seem to be seeing. So if somebody is having IT, time to sell. I mean, I'm spending disproportionate amount of time on IT because that would be the focus here today. Bipro ADR 18% higher. 18% higher on these numbers. And I rubbed my eyes. I said, hey, kya ho hai? Yeah, so, so I think people who are over-owned in IT, I think this could be a good opportunity to trim because as it is, markets are not cheap. So overall, within that basket, given the growth profile of IT also, they are not really cheap stocks. So I am not buying IT for sure. And if they continue to rally, then it will be a good opportunity to trim. Okay, it will be a good opportunity to trade some of these IT counters if they do rally the way ADRs and their other um, you know, indicators are suggesting. But uh, what did you make of this acquisitions that Tata Consumer has done, Sandeep? The acquisitions are good in the sense that uh, both the companies are very different what they have acquired and there is growth potential given that <clears throat> the organic segment has an element of uh, attraction today and to that extent organic India standalone was maybe not able to drive the growth so much so it's possible Tata consumer could drive growth and even for uh, the Ching's basket, all uh, the, the, those are good products. Now, the only question mark will be on the valuations of the acquisition because despite the consumer sentiment being low and consumer uh, stocks uh, in the market not doing very well, on the undistilled space, the valuations have not fallen. In fact, the valuations have been stretched. So I think that's the only thing which is there. So now it will depend on execution and whether how they can drive the margins of the acquired businesses so that will determine the near term impact longer term i think uh, the companies they have acquired have growth potential okay so that's a growth potential which opens up for tata consumer of course how they manage to execute these and grow these businesses something to watch out for but the other space which has been uh, a bit on the back foot, uh, Sandeep, is the entire FMCG space. And I'm talking about your core staples, you know, and even the retailers, the likes of DMART, etc. Uh, with the initial green shoots being talked about by a couple of companies like Marico, etc., do you think it's good time to start buying some of these names for that eventual recovery that might happen, let's say, one quarter down the line, but the valuations are comfortable? Yeah, I think uh, I didn't ever say that we could actually see the consumer sector as a sort of contrarian sector, but that's the scenario today where uh, these are the stocks which have not actually performed. Consumer demand has been muted, but a revival should be imminent as inflation comes under control and uh, 
consume consumption actually picks up going forward so i would agree with that now given at the overall looking at the overall market construct where market is at nearly 22000 levels for the nifty the return potential of the nifty itself now becomes low for this year so in this context if we can get some consumer companies which can even deliver 12 to 15% return then it will be a attractive return for this uh, this calendar year 83 points higher for nifty it's going to be you just one of those days where we would be we would really be seeing a lot of fall of buying in terms of it also we saw a hustle and bustle even in psu banks on friday mm. small amounts <clears throat> is that trade opening up again yeah that trade is opening up again because and uh, i think many of the psu banking stocks like i was looking at the charts for tan lakshmi bank central bank of india union bank etc many of these stocks uh, you know they've they've managed to give a, a strong confirmation breakout so you know what, what had been happening over the last i think two months or three months or so these stocks had gone through a very plateaued kind of a price movement where they were just stuck into a more or less a trading range no major price movements or trends emerging for these stocks the moving average has had uh, flattened out for these uh, stocks especially the 50 day moving average had flattened out for many of these stocks so you know we were getting into a, a point where there was an anticipation that maybe this consolidation may continue for some more time and we'll eventually have to wait out for the signs of breakouts and the classic way to do is in terms of technical indicator we look out for bollinger bands contracting and coming to a band of maybe 3% to 5% range for many of these stocks depending on the beta of our uh, these individual names but then on friday we saw many of these stocks breaking past about their individual bollinger bands breaking out of their consolidation and on the back of extremely strong volume so when you look at this in the entirety of the last two months of consolidation the trends prior to that where these stocks had done exceptionally well i think all of that adds up to that this is a start of a fresh momentum for these psu banking names the only uh, thing which i think was uh, i saw it missing from the psu banking stocks was the lack of strong participation coming from the likes of bank of baroda maybe some lack of participation which come back which came back into an sbi because you know these stocks these two stocks are uh, one of the stronger ones from the psu banking names but they are nowhere close to their previous swing high so when you see mid cap and the small cap end of the psu bank stocks coming out of the consolidation you would ideally expect that the large cap names would also participate and maybe give a fresh lease of a breakout but that was not the case uh, which we've seen on friday Okay so that's about the PSU banking names and which are the you know charts which are looking better than the rest but let's uh, bring you an ET9 exclusive and this is a big one we learned from reliable sources that Biocon has initiated talks for potential stake sale in its biosimilar arm which is Syngene um for more details let's go across to my colleague Srishti hi Srishti good morning tell us what are you picking up Very good morning and first of all yes Biocon is in focus as our sources tell us that the company has initiated talks for a potential stake sale in their biologic arm as well as their research division that is Syngene this is what our sources tell us and the company will be utilizing this particular money to uh, par off some of their debt that is there in their books the company will use the proceeds to reduce their debt which as of September 23 stood at around 17000 crores and the company also has done and par of some of their stakes in both of these divisions in the past as well because uh, as for their biosimilar business the last stake sale valued this business at a 6 billion dollar valuation serum institute of india has uh, come out with a deal where they have gone ahead and uh, valued this particular business at a 6 billion dollar valuation and biocon actually holds around close to 70% stake in their biologic arm and similar is case for the syngene as well where biocon holds around 54% stake in this research division and in the last stake sale wherein biocon uh, went ahead and sold around 16% stake in their research arm that is syngene and that was done at a rupees 550 to 575 rupees per share and that is what our sources tell us that this time the company has initiated talks with the potential investors to uh, par off and reduce their stake in both of these uh, divisions maybe and then they are going to utilize this money for uh, the reduction of the debt on their books and that's uh, the exclusive on biocon back to you interesting shrishti thanks so much for bringing us that exclusive detail so there could be pairing down of stake in the biosimilar arm as well as in gene so we'll watch by for what it means for the company and the kind of debt reduction etc it can uh, result into but sandeep your take on uh, you know biocon uh, what's the view i've been tracking this for a very long time 
Any so, other pharma yes. company that you've been tracking and liking within the healthcare space <coughs> or diagnostics? The diagnostics is a space which I'm avoiding because I think the competitor intensity is only growing and uh, there were small, small upticks in pricing, etc. But then the volume growth has been muted. But on the pharma side, we continue to hold Lupin and Sun Pharma, which we think have uh, drivers for both earnings growth and valuations now are not cheap, but then they still hold potential for upside. So Sun Pharma, we've been holding for a very long time. Lupin, we bought in to a couple of years back as a turnaround case, and I think uh, it still could have somewhere to run. Good one. Okay. We saw a move in ONGC also, Kunal, on uh, Friday. Anything looking strong there? I think we've discussed this one a couple of times, right? Yeah, and uh, again, I think this was a stock which had seen a maximum amount of open interest built up. So I was actually looking at the charts for OI built up, and for ONGC, there was almost an 18% jump in the uh, cumulative open interest for uh, you know the three series which is there on the futures and that's a you know a, a phenomenal kind of a move for a stock like ONGC which has been typically very low beta but then I think uh, uh, you know the stock has been going into a slow steady gradual uptrend so on a single day when you saw the stock moving up by five percent five and a half four percent margin and then an 18 percent jump it indicates a fresh uh, in a bout of uh, participation which has come back into ONGC the stock scaling past about the previous swing highs I think to 12 to 14 was the previous swing high for uh, ONGC the stock managed to break past about those levels and the confidence with which traders are carrying forward their long pa long positions into the stock even at a fresh 52 week high and a breakout of the previous swing high I think all of that indicates that we could be looking at this trend continuing for ONGC for some more time to 10 to 12 which was the previous breakout approximately that would now become a support for ONGC for so for traders who are carrying for long positions they may keep that as a stop loss and continue to hold longs so that's about ONGC continue to hold on to your longs but Kunal uh, a quick take on Zomato as well a large trade just happened almost four and a half crore shares uh, but chart check wise where do you see this one headed I think now the stock is inching very close to the all-time high levels I think of 160 165 approximately so you know what I like about the charts for Zomato in the last two months specifically was you know there was an initial move towards 120 mark it was in the back of some extremely strong volume some sudden price movements then from 120 to 140 the price movements have been very slow steady and gradual so you know, there is no major built up of volume formation so it's the inertia move uh, you know where the stocks move on from one range to the other range upping the base for themselves so now I think that's a classical sign of trends coming back and more consistency coming back into the price trends this is generally a uh, precursor where the stocks break past about the previous life high levels for themselves. So I would probably believe that hopefully in the next uh, you know three months or so, we could be looking at Zomato coming back or at least retesting the previous size of 160 plus. All right, there you have it. Uh, that's the view on Zomato and Sandeep. Before we let you go, lots of uh, focus on PSUs all of 2023. What's uh, your call for this year when it comes to PSUs across the board? I would say a large part of re-rating is done. Uh, now it's become, the stocks have become trader favorites and our most HNI retail portfolios as well as traders books are full of them. And uh, so people need to be careful where they're investing in the PSU basket, I would say. Okay, there you have it. Thanks so much for joining in and giving us your views.